Welcome back. The B isn't the only major sporting event taking place in Minot this week. Team USA is holding the 2024 Minot Sled Hockey Series at Mesa Arena beginning tomorrow. The series features the men's U.S. National Sled Hockey Team and the women's Development Sled Hockey Team. The teams took to the ice today for practice. Chloe Kirkpatrick, a Fargo native, tells us how she got involved in sled hockey. My grandfather was looking around for an adaptive sport for me to do, and hockey was the closest to me in Fargo, in the Fargo area. So I got to do sled hockey, and that's how I fell in love with the sports. Kirkpatrick is not the only North Dakota product on the women's team. Hope McGelke from Bismarck told us why this opportunity is so special for her. I don't get to play in front of family and friends very often, so this is this is huge for me, and I think it's really it's really something special, and I'm excited that I actually get to share it with my teammates too. A lot of them have never been to North Dakota, so it's pretty awesome. I know Canada; they they like to come out and they hit hard, and they're really um, they're a really talented team. So just really excited to get into some competitive games and play our game and have some fun with it. Each team will play Canada twice, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. The men will face off at noon and 1 p.m. tomorrow, followed by the women at 3 and 4. Now, the U.S. National Para Ice Hockey Team took a break from the puck and replaced it with a curling stone tonight. Prairie Grits head sled hockey coach Christopher Douglas says this is most of the national team's first time trying curling, even though they've seen it in the Paralympics. He says this season was also the first time that Prairie Grit tried adaptive curling. It's gone over very well, and the kids are absolutely excited to, to move forward. And uh, we'll see what happens next season. Maybe we'll have. He says the idea to host the sled hockey national team came from members within the curling club and Minot Air Force Base's curling league. Now that Minot Air Force Base league is the only official military league in the United States. League coordinator Wesley Mason says he knows this because he says he found out when he tried to establish a military curling championship with other bases. The base has been competing for the last six weeks and they're currently in the semifinals to determine who advances to the championship match among themselves. Mason is also cooking up more plans with neighbors across the border. Moose Jaw, right across the border, they have a, a Air Force, Canadian Air Force base there, and they have military curlers, so we might get an international championship going next year. Sounds like a lot of fun. He says this year the base had 11 teams, and they usually have four to eight people per team, depending on their schedules. Well, if you're old enough, you'll remember the intro to the wide world of sports. It included the line, the thrill over victory and the agony of defeat. The Kildare boys basketball team got to experience the thrill of victory and earn the Cowboys a place in a state tournament for the first time since 1953. Jackson Reese made a putback just before the buzzer in a Division A state qualifier this past weekend against Stanley. It avenged an earlier loss to the Blue Jays and it sent the Cowboys fans onto the court to celebrate the sudden victory. We said if they make it, we're going the length of the court. We didn't want to use a timeout. Go, we practiced that. We wanted to get the shot up because we knew it would be an overtime, um, which we just come out of, so we we're confident there. But Jackson always puts himself in the right spot to make the plays, and he made it. Then uh, I think I was on the court before the buzzer went off, so I hope they don't look at replay. But hey, we're here now. Jackson's been making plays like that all year. We knew, we believed in him. We just had to get the ball up the court, and we, we knew one of our guys was going to get the finish. So we're proud of our guys. Well, the Cowboys certainly understood the historical significance of their victory, and it was something they even talked about before they headed to Newtown for the game. Kildare hasn't made it in 70-some years. This state tournament's going to be fun, fun for Kildare. We haven't made it this far in forever, so we're proud. I told the boys going into this, um, I'm originally from Elgin, and Elgin went to state like in 1956. And when I was a senior, I got the honor to go in 1992. In that time frame, they still talk about that. I said, you guys got an opportunity. We had practice this morning in the old gym. I said, take a look at that banner, because when we come back, there's going to be a new year on that banner, and it's going to be your guys's. Well, I like to talk about Corey Dalen. Corey is probably the best defender in the state. He locks down the other team's best player and holds him to single digits every time. We couldn't do it without him. Kildare has a tough task on Thursday in Fargo. The Cowboys are matched up against Kindred, the top seed in the A tournament. But hey, you know what? It's state. Anything can happen, right?